Hi, everybody. My name is David, and I'm here with uh, e Ray, Fayez, and Isaac, and we are Team 3 Breast Team. Today, we'll be giving a presentation on electric versus combustion vehicles. So we're first going to touch on the history of these vehicles, and then we're going to go over the similarities and differences between combustion and electric vehicles. And finally, we're going to reach a conclusion and kind of tie it up and talk about why it matters. So the first electric vehicles or EVs weren't great, but by the 19th century, they had been worked on enough so that they could reach a whopping 14 miles an hour and they used rechargeable batteries. Combustion vehicles were developed a little while after EVs and they had their fair share of issues too. Uh, while Henry Ford's newest car at the time, the Model T, didn't uh, fix all of its issues, it quickly became the electric car industry's biggest nightmare as this car was able to reach speeds of up to 45 miles an hour and could travel over 100 miles on a full tank. This is the first widely popular combustion car. And in the following years, gasoline powered cars dominated the market due to little technological advancements in battery and EV tech. In recent years, batteries and EVs have been worked on a lot to finally be able to compete with their gas powered counterparts. So as David alluded to earlier, a electric car and a gas car may seem to have some differences, but there are a few similarities, which should be noted. So this is sort of a small activity. Try to tell the difference between electric and a gas car, whether it's uh, one of these cars. Um, we recommend you to take a pause and try to figure it out. And as you can see here, the car on the left is an electric car. And the car on the right is a hybrid car, meaning it's neither electric or a gas car. So gotcha there. The basic design of a car is to bring someone from one place to another. And that would mean that a car would have to be aerodynamic, meaning withstand the air pressure against it. A car would be going at a fast speed, so that would mean it would have to handle the air pressure coming on it to provide a comfortable ride for the user. A car's internal structure will also relatively be the same. It will have a gas and a brake pedal at the bottom, steering wheel, and mirrors on the side to look in the back. And in a very high level view, a car will take an input, whether it be in the gas pump or in the car battery, and it will provide energy for the car's output, which we would refer to as the car's engine or the car's motor. Now that we've talked about some of the similarities between combustion and electric vehicles, let's talk about some of the differences. At the heart of the internal combustion engine is the piston. Now, the goal of the piston is to turn chemical energy stored in a fuel source, usually gasoline, into rotational energy at the wheels, which can be used to move the vehicle. Here we have a diagram of a four-stroke combustion engine, the most common combustion engine in vehicles today. The piston has six main parts, shown and labeled here. Four strokes refers to the number of vertical movements of the piston in order to complete one power cycle. In the first intake stroke, an air and fuel mixture is injected into the chamber through the intake valve. The second compression stroke does exactly that and compresses the mixture. The spark plug ignites the mixture, causing the third power stroke, where the piston is forced downwards by the increasing pressure. This is where the energy actually comes from. In the last exhaust stroke, the exhaust valve is opened up and emissions are released. The point of all of this is to cause the piston to rotate the camshaft which provides rotational energy for the wheels. The goal of an electric motor is also to convert fuel, in this case electricity, into the rotational force at the wheels. It does this through the interaction of electric fields and magnetic fields. Here, a power supply provides a steady electric current to the rotating part of the electric motor through a connection between the stationary brushes, the red and blue rectangles in the diagram, and the moving circular comm commutator. Think of the brushes like a shell that wraps around the spinning commutator. The reason we need these brushes is because electricity is actually flowing through the rotating part. And in order for it to flow without wires getting twisted up, we need a socket that can rotate. As the brushes scrape against the rotating commutator, current is passed through the armature, which interacts with the magnetic field and causes the whole thing to rotate. This rotation is then used to drive the rotation at the wheels, similar to how a camshaft is used in a gasoline-based combustion engine. 
Now, the reason our decision between electric or combustion vehicles matters comes down to the fuel. The gasoline used in combustion engines is extracted from the ground and then transported through pipelines. Each of these steps, including the final one where that gasoline is burned, release emissions into the air, the ground, and the water. The electricity used in electric vehicles is generated using fossil fuel plants or renewable energy plants and is then transported through transmission lines to be used in vehicles. The use of electricity produces almost no emissions. The emissions from electricity is almost entirely based on whether it was generated using fossil fuels or renewable sources. Global warming has become more alarming over the years as new information is being presented and the realities of climate change are being discussed more seriously. Carbon dioxide is one of the greenhouse gases responsible for global warming. Carbon dioxide is emitted by combustion engines when energy is converted. Like a blanket over the earth, it traps heat and transmits it back to the earth. We have seen that the amount of heat being trapped on earth has surpassed the earth's range. So over time, this has led to the increase in the earth's average temperature. What does this mean for our future? Electric vehicles hold the potential to greatly transform the transportation sector. They provide more efficient vehicles that match gasoline vehicles in cosmetics. Given the fact that this sector is responsible for around 28% of all carbon emissions, prioritizing low emission vehicles is important to transforming the current phenomenon that is endangering the planet. The widespread adoption of electric vehicles will result in a drastic drop of carbon emissions. To run closer to this goal, Gavin Newsom announced that all vehicles sold in California after the year 2035 will be no emission vehicles. We hope this presentation was informative and insightful. We would also like you to reflect on ways in which you can be less destructive to the environment.